Okay, here is the spreadsheet that shows you how to sort all your cells into groups uh, in what I will call the Schwankme procedure, sort. Um, this is pretty much the general process that um, most people are using, but um, Schwankme talked me through it. Um, so I'll, I'll give it his name. Uh, so first of all, you feed in all the values that you have from the cells you've got. And here's what I've got over on the, this array over here. The, um, the pack that I have is seven groups of 12 pairs, seven in series. So there's 12 pairs, in parallel and seven of those in series, wired in series, to to give me a 24 volt, notionally 24, actually 25 and a bit volts uh, pack. So you grab all that and th the moment you put all that data in, this array here gets created, which instantly gives you the standard sort arrangement. Um, I'll step you through the magic that goes from from here, which is not well sorted at all. That's the bungling that I've done um, to a, a much better sort. Uh, so the steps were: uh, this spreadsheet takes that those columns and feeds them into this column. So it takes these seven columns and creates one big long column in step one. In step two, it copies all that column and sorts it from highest capacity cell all the way down to the last. And then in step three, for reasons that will become clear slightly in the next step, I take every seven, every second group of seven and I sort them from lowest to highest. So I reverse the sort order. And there, and there, and so on, all the way down. Then what I do is I transpose each row, each one of these gets transposed over to here. So I'm feeding the cells from the highest, from left to right, across to here. Then this is a transposition of, of this chunk here going across there, which has the effect of being equivalent to feeding the cells in from right to left. So you'll see the, the numbers go from highest to lowest there, then they come down here and go down this way to the left, then they go down and downwards to the right, then to the left, then to the right, left, right, zigging, zigzagging all the way down to this last cell here. And that is the typical sort that uh, everyone does. So what you, just, you can just grab that data, copy that, come over here to a blank array that I've um, arranged, which has all these um, sums and divergencies ready. And if we paste just the values from the cell over here, we get to see these are the divergences now. So back here in my messed up arrangement, um, this column here had an overall capacity of 424 above the average, way above the average. And this one here is way below the average. And this particular one here happened to be pretty close and the rest were all over the place. Whereas after doing a decent sort, a zigzag sort, you end up with the worst um, is 51, which is miles better, and the best is zero. It's bang on the average, which is great. Now at this time point, you could choose to just use that as is, because as we know, the, 
the um, the machinery that we are using to measure our capacities is not super precise. Um, so I'm guessing that these numbers, all of these capacity readings, are roughly right, but not precisely right. So although this says it's a precisely the average, I don't um, imagine that in in the real world it really is. So you can you could just say, oh well, that's close enough. What um, Spunk me talked me through was his procedure for arriving at um, what he'd done. The end result, I'll show you, all. this is the end result of what he did. He took my data, fiddled with it, and ended up with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0. Just 3 milliamp hours away from the average, which is so beautiful. Um, in practice, uh, it's a bit over the top, but um, mathematically, it's a lovely thing. So the the um, the technique for getting this, which is probably perfectly fine, to be more mathematically beautiful, is to start with the first row and work to get that down to zero. So at the moment we know that it is 28 above the average. So we want to reduce this number by 28. And the way to do that is to look at each one of these. Uh, the way I did it was to start from the bottom. And I look across for a lower number. Now because these were sorted from right to left, this last column, these are going up. So I need to start here and look for a number that is going to be 20. 8 lower than 36.19. So if I just quickly type 36.19 minus 28 equals 3591. Is there anything 395 would be the closest to getting that down. It's not perfect, but if we take that, cut that, throw it over here for the mo moment, paste that there, grab this cell here, cut that and put it in there, paste that, copy, cut and paste, then we're down to four. So then what we do is we go, okay, can we do any better? We still need to trim four off that and we can look, oh look at this one here, this one's three off, let's grab this and paste that there, grab this and paste it there, and then put this one back, cut and paste. So now they're one off, now you start to ask yourself how fussy are you, but look, there's one that's one above, so if we... Uh, Oh, actually, we want to go one down, don't we? Uh, ah, here we go. This is one below. So if we grab that and throw it over there, grab this and put it in place there, and then put this one back. Zero. Lovely. And I'll just... Ah, very nice. So now this one is 13 above. So, uh, we're not going to get it there, so we're looking for th um, 13 less than, let's take this one here, 36, 17, minus 13 equals 3604, uh, here's 3602, so if we grab this, toss it over here, paste that there, Take this one here, cut that, paste that, cut that, and paste it back in there. We're at minus 2, so we're pretty close. So now we want to add 2, and this one is going to go up too steeply. Ah, here we go. This 
if we add 2 to 31 we get 33 so this is going to be perfect we'll take this throw it over there grab this slam it in there cut that paste it back there bingo lovely all right minus two now as we get across my experience has been that it gets easier and easier so let's go minus two so we want to increase one of these by two and that's not going to work that column that row there isn't going to help us that one there is going to go too far so that's no good this one here is going to go up by one which is uh, close but no scar here we go this is too high so if we cut that toss it over there grab this and paste it there cut that and put it back in place bingo <laughs> all right so six we're looking to we are six over the average we want to reduce by six and 15 down to 12 is heading in the right direction I'll do that so cut that paste that cut that put that back so now we're three over so we want to reduce one of these by three and oh and there we go there's a difference of three so we'll throw that across cut that paste it in there cut that paste it back in place bingo that's good all right 13 so we're 13 over we want to reduce one of these by 13 and um, I'm just looking that is heading in the wrong direction that is heading in the wrong direction that's heading in the wrong direction this one's going in the right direction um, 67 minus 13 equals 54 59 is not quite right but I'm going to go with this one just to get us closer um, because that is easier for my brain to work out so now we're down to five which is a bit easier so we want we're five over we want to reduce one of these by five and so if we look that's no good that's no good uh, that's no good that's no good that's no good that gets us in the right direction um, this is pretty close let's do this cut that throw it in there cut that throw it in there now we're one over so we just want to reduce one of these by one can we do it is there anything there that is one lower and the answer is not obviously uh, so let's just have a closer look one lower 46 no 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 that's the wrong direction that's no good that's no good and that's no good all right so that's about as low as i can get that column let's go over to here and see if we can reduce this by 29 so we, that's not lower that's not lower that's not lower that is quite a bit lower let's try this see how that gets us oops where did i go cut paste cut paste cut paste 
All right, now we're down to eight. That's a bit easier. So we want them to reduce by eight. That's no good. 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 This one is in the right ballpark. Let's do that one and see how close it gets us. Three. Three. Can we do better than three? Three. Oh, look. We want to go down three and there. Oh, there's three. Okay. Cut that. Paste it there. Cut that. Paste it there. Cut that. Paste it there. Zero. Okay. Now we have possibly an impossible task. Can we take one from here and add it to there? That's not going to help us. They're both over, so um, there's nothing we can do to make that better. Um, looking back at what uh, Spunkme did, he had a slightly different arrangement. So he got to three in one column, and I've got one and two, which I'm going to argue is even better, um, because the divergence is even less. So that is the in the polishing of the sorting procedure. Um, so as long as you start from the left-hand column and go one column at a time, you will get to the end, and uh, and there you have it. That is the Schmunkly sorting procedure. Um, it works quite nicely and it's a bit more than is strictly necessary in the real world but it's quite an, an enjoyable little game if you like little maths puzzles. Um, I quite enjoy doing that. Uh, so uh, that is this whole spreadsheet is available. I'll share it um, so that you can copy this and feed in your own numbers into here and it will automatically splurt out this here. So imagine if you had um, 4400 then you see um, it automatically does that um, and so then you can take that data, copy it into here, I'll um, I'll leave this blank. Well, I'll leave it the way it is, but you can, when, when, when you copy the spreadsheet, you can delete that, copy it, uh, and then copy the your particular data set result into here, and then uh, work on the divergences. Hope that is helpful to you. There you go. Cheers. <laughs>